Hello, USA Swimming. Thanks for joining us for another cooking demo. My name is Alicia Glass. I'm a senior sport dietitian at the USOPC, and I'm joined today by Blake Peroni, one of our national team swimmers. Say hey, Blake. Hi, how's it going? Hey, thanks so much for joining us today. And we got a pretty quick and easy recipe that I wanted to share with everybody. It actually comes from Shalane Flanagan's cookbook, which I use a lot. She has this one, and then she has a. a well, no way. I actually, cookbook. I have that book. Yeah, so I think we actually gave it as a national team um, gift one year because it's so good. Um, but we're going to be cooking the ginger molasses granola today, which um, I've tried it. It's so good. Give us a little bit of a rundown on what, what your days look like these days given COVID and quarantine. Yeah, uh, they're, well, they, they were about the same, but I, today was the first day I got in the water. So okay, nice. yeah, that's good. Nice to be in a in a real pool, um, you know, with teas on the bottom and not in like a pond or something. Uh, it depends on the day, but most of the days I'll do two sessions of CrossFit. Um, so like eight to nine dry land workouts a week, yeah. and that's been basically it. Maybe a little bit of running or walking, and it it, it is kind of getting you know. I mean, I'm sure everyone is feeling that they were wanting to get back in a pool, but I was, yeah, I was ready to get back. It was nice to be in today. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, you know, um, you strength and power athletes, you, you seem to like to do some of that dry land stuff. So the CrossFit stuff sounds awesome right up your alley. Yeah, like, yeah. I think just the change of variety was really, really fun. Cause I, like I had never done any kind of like handstand push ups or like muscle ups or, you know, I don't know, just different gymnastics movements. That was really fun. So you got a whole new skill set. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Cool. The first thing you need, uh, you need a one cup dry measuring spoon. Grab one of those. Um, this recipe calls for old fashioned rolled oats. We're gonna add three cups of uh, rolled oats into your big bowl that we have out. These are the, this is the brand or the ones that I have. The... Perfect, love it. So three cups of that. Are oats something that you have a lot of like around the house? Yeah, the two most common things I have for breakfast are either oatmeal or eggs. Um, yeah. And I like oatmeal because I can put a bunch of different stuff in it every day and it's not, it doesn't get super boring. Um, next ingredient we're going to do is one cup of unsweetened uh, dried coconut. We're going to do one cup of either seeds or nuts. So this is totally up to you what you want to add. I'm going to do half of a cup of pumpkin seeds and then I'm going to do half of a cup of almonds. Okay. okay. That's what I'm gonna do, but you can do whatever you want as long as it adds up to a cup. Then we're gonna add in half of a cup of dried fruit. Okay. okay. And um, I've done, in the past I've done like small little bits of mango. Um, you can do craisins or raisins, which are super easy. Today I'm gonna do cherries. Um, the last thing we're gonna add is the flavor profile. So this is another deviation I'm gonna make from the recipe and it's just because I'm not as much of a fan of ginger. You might be Blake. So you're gonna do four teaspoons total of various spices. Okay, so um, recipe calls for two teaspoons of ginger and two teaspoons cinnamon. I'm gonna do probably one teaspoon of ginger and then three teaspoons of cinnamon. Okay. Once you have all those dry ingredients, oh, the last thing, salt. Okay, you can add um, half of a teaspoon of salt, and you can kind of eyeball that, or you can measure it out directly, whatever, however confident you feel in your salt measurement. Okay, once you have that all together, then we're just going to mix it up just to make sure that you don't have any clumps of one ingredient in there. Next thing we're going to do is the liquid ingredients. Okay, and so the liquid ingredients, I like to just use a measuring, a glass measuring cup, um, liquid measuring cup, and I like to just start with the first ingredient, which is gonna be, um, we'll start with the oil. And this is a little baking secret. If you do the oil first, and then you do the super sticky stuff second, then you're not scraping out the cup because all the sticky stuff is stuck to the, right. the, um, the actual cup. Okay, so we're gonna do, um, Whatever your oil is, we're going to do a third of a cup of the oil. I have uh, coconut oil. Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah. All right, so we have a third of a cup coconut oil uh, or whatever oil you're going to choose. Then you're going to do a quarter of a cup of honey, and this is where math gets involved with your measuring cup. Uh -oh. So just kind of look through or look at how much you think you're going to add to make up a quarter of a cup. 
So I'm going to add that into my measuring cup here. How much of the molasses? Molasses is another quarter of a cup. So for me and my trained eye, I'm just going to do a big dollop of it. So now we're going to put this in the microwave. I wouldn't put it for too long. I'd say, I don't know, maybe 30 seconds or something. Okay. Just put it in the microwave, keep an eye on it, make sure it doesn't explode in there. We're just trying to heat it up a little bit so that it mixes together and then um, it's easier to stir it into the oil. So pour this into the... Uh... Oh, perfect. Like while you're stirring, what's your favorite recipe to make? Um... I don't have like too many things that I cook that involve like a detailed recipe. Yep. Long recipe. The, the thing I make most frequently for a snack is a, a toasted bagel with peanut butter and banana. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, those are my, that's my favorite probably. Who taught you how to cook or how did you learn to cook? Um, my dad had me cook a lot when I was growing up. Um, I don't know, no one ever really taught me like this is this, this is this, but it's something I think I've just gotten better with over time. Yeah. So you kind of I mean, you have to have an interest in it, and then you'll just like eventually get better and better at it. And I always I tell athletes it's a cumulative skill set. Yeah. Just continue to add on things, and you just learn various things about cooking and food prep, and that never really goes away. If you got your parchment paper on there, all we're gonna do is gonna dump our um, granola mixture onto the baking sheet, okay. and then. You're just going to spread it out in one even layer. And as we get it spread out into that one even layer, the thing about making granola, depending on how you like it, if you like it clumpy and with big chunks, you're gonna bake it and you're not gonna touch it until it's done. But if you're someone that likes it in small little pieces or more like a cereal without big chunks in it, then you want to toss it off it. Okay, so the thing about granola too is that it's, we're cooking it at 275, which is a relatively low baking temperature, but then we got 45 minutes. Right. Okay, so as soon as you're ready, Blake, you can toss that in. All right. All right, Blake, I got a question for you. All right. The early mornings that you have practice, like you're rolling out of bed and going to early morning practice, what's your favorite snack to, to just make real fast and go? Because we all know people want to sleep the last possible second. Yeah, I'm, and I'm not definitely not a morning person, so I'm not spending 20 minutes making breakfast before practice. So I just have, usually I'll have a toasted English muffin with jam on it. And awesome. that's basically it. Yeah. So easy. Yeah. And You've learned probably, I guess, at what point did you learn eating no breakfast before practice was not a good idea? Yeah. I mean, it depends. Like, cause some of our practice are a little easier than others and I can get by with like a bar or like yeah. a granola, like a regular granola bar. Um, but some are, some are pretty hard and you, like, actually I like, I'm pretty good about getting through halfway, but then afterwards you just like really start to drag and like, yeah, I definitely should have eaten <laughs> something. But I also keep those, uh, those like stinger waffles in my locker. <laughs> in the at the pool so if i'm ever like starving dying i'll just go eat one of those you have a backup plan yeah awesome well we're gonna pull out this granola it's been our 45 minutes so we're gonna see what it looks like all right so we got our we got our finished product here it smells amazing i don't know about yours yeah i, cr I crunched mine up a bunch Oh, perfect. Yes. So how are you going to eat this? Are you going to eat it just as finger food? I don't know. Probably. I kind of want to put some milk in it. It kind of is kind of cereally. Yep. You can do that. You can um, add it as a, a yogurt parfait. Um, like I so said, you can just eat it kind of as a snack. It kind of depends on how you like it. All right, Blake. Thank you so much for taking the time to stir up this recipe with us. Um, honestly, guys, this is a keeper recipe. It's so good and it was so easy. I don't know how long it took us to do it, but it, it can be, especially if you get really comfortable making it, you can whip this thing up in, I don't know, 10 minutes prep time and then throw it in the oven and it really doesn't take much to kind of keep an eye on it. So um, thanks again, Blake. We'll see you soon. And um, thanks for tuning in, everybody. Thanks for having me.